Wait one second. I want my, my team on the screen. Come sure, come sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just the person I was gonna ask. What did you say to him in between round one that fired you him up so much? You, after the after the end of the first round, at the start of the second, looked like you wanted to run through a wall. What did he say to you? He's my little brother, so I pushed him a little bit. Like, hey, you know, you did so much, we trained so hard, and you know for who you're doing this, everything. So that pumps him up, and he went to the second round and finished him really good, really technical and super clean. And we practiced this so many times. I just remembered him, like, hey, we did this so many times. It's like, for you, it's nothing, like, it's nothing special. So just do whatever you're gonna do, and whatever we did the last 10 weeks, and yeah, I tell you. He also about. remembered him that he is with him because I was translating what he said in uh, on German, and I know the feeling between brothers. He remembered him. He said, "Nasrat, I'm with you," and I think that had a, a big, big effect on Nasrat. He and I saw you grab the towel out of George's hand. To, was his technique not good at cornering that? I saw you start whipping it like your life depending on it. <laughs> <laughs> George was trying to be easily on it. I, I was really excited, that's why. Nervous. I was really nervous, so that's why I took it and I, yeah. Okay, guys. Next question. <laughs> I could have been right. Somebody else? All right, I got so another one. Go ahead, please. You said you're not going to call anyone out, but uh, is there a time frame for when you want to come back? What are you looking for down the line? I don't call any specific names. I was supposed to fight John McDessie, so if you can reschedule this as soon as possible, it's unfinished business and Sean, send me the contract. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to take risks. <laughs> no, man. Yeah. So you and Faraz, like when after the fight, you were kind of grappling with him, playing around after the fight. How close is your relationship with Faraz? How big of an influence is he on your career? First of all, everybody who's in my corner, who's really close to me, they're like my family, you know? I try to keep distance with people who are not close to me. Like if you say, see this, my brother Omar, for example, he came straight from Morocco, straight from the airport to the commentary to, to be the translator today. My brother is 24 7 with me. Faraz Sahabi is also a brother like this. And you know, he's really close to my heart. He's not just my head coach, you know. And uh, it was just funny, you know. We just played around. I went for the leg lock because he likes leg locks and yeah, we enjoy the moment. Do you feel like making your fights almost like a family affair? Does it make everything? You know, more relaxed, it's not 100%. Like Only as a team, you are strong. You know, everybody, you cannot be the, the, the guy who, who, the lone wolf, you know, it doesn't work in this game. The competition is so strong, you know, and if you have a family, the, like if you have a team, it's like family, you know, it gives a different feeling. I have my brother, I have George St. Pierre, Fraz Abi in the back, you know, they're pumping me. This was just amazing feeling. Then I walk in, I see all the fans, you know. Then I see my brother Oman, he's a commentary. This, this was funny because he's a fighter, him say he fights Abu Dhabi, you know. And I see these guys, man, this gives me such a great energy and uh, gives me a lot of confidence. There's not a lot of fighters in the UFC that have like a Moroccan or German background. How big is it and important is it to, to represent those kind of things? Actually, my uh, background is Afghanistan. And we try <laughs> to put our countries on the map, you know, because our countries, they don't have this spotlight and the sport. And, I've tried to represent um, Germany and Afghanistan, you know, I have the Afghan flag to give a little bit hope to these kids, you know, and yeah, we try to bring the UFC next year back to Germany. Between the first and the second round, uh, I noticed you guys laughed, like someone told you a joke. Do you mind sharing what made you laugh? In between? For me, fighting is not like most of people think about fighting, like go in, nervous, this and that. I love this so much. I'm a fanboy of the sport, you know, so being in there, see all these things, you know, it, and knowing that I worked so hard, I did everything possible. Nobody can work harder than me. Man, I sacrificed my life for this. And this gives me so much joy. I don't force something, you know, because I just love it so much. And I just enjoyed the moment, you know, this made me smiling and yeah. Did your coaches give you any advice between the rounds? Because two judges had it for you, one had it for him. Excuse me? Between rounds, did your coaches give you any advice? I mean, not that it mattered, but two judges had it for you, one had it for him after yeah, the first. Yeah, the, the game plan was uh, simple. Just, Joachim Silva is a tough guy, brawler, heavy punch, you know. We don't want to make it uh, look bad, the fight, just go in, try to brawl whoever falls first, you know. We have a really good game plan, just the first round was just analyzed, you know. Read his movements, my coach, they told me, just stay patient, you're much, you're on another level than him, but don't make a mistake, there's a Champions League, one mistake can cost you the fight. So, second round, I knew what's coming, his speed, I read everything, you know, I got used to it, then I took the momentum and, uh, yeah. What did uh, George say about your performance? 
George was so happy. Yeah. George is a really nervous guy between f and before the fight I was yeah. so happy, I was smiling, this and that. And George was like, That's right, man, you're a psychopath. Oh, you're so happy. I said, George, I love it so much. You guys, you are my idols, my brothers, yeah, everybody here. And the, the only thing I can do is smile, you know. And he was really impressed, you know. And uh, George, uh, thank, thanks to them, thanks for us. They put so much time on us, you know. They invest so much time. We're just two kids from Germany, you know. They took us like a family. They invest so much time, and uh, hopefully, it's gonna gonna pay off soon. Yeah, you, you have Faraz and GSK in your corner. Can you get any better than that? In my opinion, this is the greatest uh, corner in MMA history. You know, the greatest fighter. The, the head coach for us, Abi, is such a genius. You know, he made GSP, he made Roy McDonald, and so humble. You know. I can't, can't describe, he's just uh, the best. And you only fought once in 2019, right? Yes, some injuries, some things, you know, but I try to stay as active as possible. That's why I was asking, send me the next contract, Sean, you know. We train, we improve always. If he sent the contract, we have a new opponent, you know. Uh, this is a journey, we enjoy the journey. So you'd like to fight again in 2019? Yeah, for sure. If I can, two, three times. If I can, can every weekend without. Uh, sometimes my coach, they try to slow me down, you know. Be, but because I'm so passionate about this, you know, I love it so much. And yeah, let's see. So any card, any specific time frame you'd like to return? <clears throat> October, November, let's see. I mean, like if the UFC can make the McDessie fight happen, we were supposed to fight, you know, I got injured. I pulled off, so it was my fault. If you can make it happen, it would be nice. Yeah. And. Um, he used to train at Tristar, right? Exactly, um, yeah, we train together. Yeah. It's not beef, it's not like something. Of course, social media tried to heat up a little bit before a fight. Then I, after he won, I called him out again, you know. He took it on a wrong way. Man, it's a sport, you know. As long as I don't uh, talk shit about your family, your religion, this is this is the limit, you know. Then just take it as a sportsman, love, love about it. We try to hype a fight. I think he pulled out also from his fight in August. Uh, like maybe you can make it October, November. November, Madison Square Garden, maybe. He lives in Montreal. I train in Montreal, so it's close. Yeah, man. When you're training at Tristar, are you staying at the fighter dorms? Oh, thank God not, man. <laughs> I don't want to say anything bad about the dorms, but 2016, first time I went there, it was a good experience, I say. Now uh, the circumstances changed a little bit. For us, but told me that they're luxury now. They, they are much better than before. I didn't went there the last three years. I just went there once. Maybe they are better. But to be honest, everything is good experience, man. Even if you live on the street for a week, you're going to have experience, you know, for the rest of your life. So, but the fire dumps, they are special. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Okay, you're a little bit of a